In the next few tutorials, we're going to take a slightly closer look at timeline editing. Now, if you remember a long time ago in this series, I was saying that you have to create different versions of your project. The first version of your project is a rough cut. And what we did was we opened events inside of the trimmer window and we chose the in and the out points and dropped them on the timeline. And then we built a timeline up very quickly, dropping the clips across so that we could create the rough cut. Now, when you've created the rough cut, the next thing you need to do is start the process of creating usually multiple fine cuts. That's where on the timeline, you trim events, you move edit points, you speed clips up, you slow them down, and you do all kinds of bits and pieces to make the end result perfect. And you go through a number of iterations of fine cuts. And at the end, what you do is you do with the agreement of your customer, you say, right, I finished the editing, this is picture lock. And the idea behind picture lock is you're effectively saying to the client, any changes beyond this point, you have to pay more money. You need to be very clear with your customer that that's what you're saying. But effectively, if they then come back and say, actually, could you change this? Could you change that? You say, of course I can, but it's going to cost you extra time on an hourly basis or however you work. So we're looking at the timeline editing tools, as I say, over the next few tutorials, how we can actually change the way things look and move them around on the timeline. So we know at the moment we can trim clips. OK, so we've got this kid running backwards and forwards at the end here on this particular clip. So we can trim them. But occasionally what you want to do is time stretch an event, either to make it play faster or slower. Now, earlier on, we looked at four point editing, which was an option here when selected up here in the trimmer window and in the timeline, which forces a clip to fit a gap, which could be speeding a clip up or slowing a clip down. But sometimes you've already got a clip in there and you say, look, I've got to move the clip along. You move the other clips along, but you've got a space to fill. And you could really do with slowing down the clip in the timeline or speeding up a clip in the timeline. Well, it's very simple to do in Sony Vegas. If you hover over the end of a clip, you get the trimmer. OK, so that's saying I'm going to trim an event. I'm going to trim one way or I'm going to trim another. But if you hold the control key, look how it changes. You've got a little squiggly line underneath, and the tooltip tells you it's now going to stretch time. So if I drag it this way, I'm going to make everything happen a lot quicker. So let's have a little look at that. And obviously, if I hover over the end of the clip, I can still trim it. But if I now hold the control key again, I can pull it out, and I can make it go a lot slower. Now, it's robotized the sound. So it's not always a perfect way of doing it because I've gone so slow, it's really robotized it. And you can sort of see things aren't absolutely perfect. But sometimes it works well. Now, one of the options I occasionally do is I right click on a clip when I'm doing this and I go down to switches and you've got this one that says reduce interlace flicker. And if you are going to make something a lot slower, sometimes it's helpful to do the reduce interlace flicker and it, it just makes it look a little bit better. Now, if you want to get back to the original length, if you hover over the end of the clip again and hold that control key and pull it back, you'll get to a point where you get neither type of line. There you go. Can you see it just there? So that's going longer. That's the original length, and that's going shorter. So you get excellent feedback, actually, in the timeline. Now, the other tip I want to show you on this tutorial is called a rolling edit. Now, a rolling edit is a must in all your work. You've got clips on your timeline, and say, for example, I was here in my timeline, so let's just click here and do M for marker. And actually, my marker point, my enter point was here. And I really needed to get this edit point to this point. Now, I could just trim this clip and then trim this clip to achieve the end result. Control Z a couple of times to undo that. However, there is a keyboard shortcut that allows you to roll the edit point between the two. Now, if you go over them, you can only get one way or the other. But if you hold the Control and the Alt key together, you get trim adjacent. It's showing me that it's going to trim the edit point for both of them. And when I start to click and drag, look up in the preview window and you see I'm getting feedback. I'm seeing where the first clip ends and the next clip starts. And as I pull them across, I'm trimming both clips simultaneously, which can save an awful lot of time and is really powerful to make sure you get things just to the right point. So that's the rolling edit which is using the control and the alt key together, click and hold your mouse and drag. And you can see, obviously, it'll snap to a marker if you need to go directly to a marker. It's a very, very useful trimming function and something that I use a great deal in my own editing work. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at what I call trimming to an event. In other words, making sure we're seeing the right part of the clips that we want to see. And also slip edits, and we'll talk a little bit about slide edits as well. 
My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful and thanks for watching.